salutations. Um, I am not feeling super amazing at the moment, but contrary to what my dad thinks, that has nothing to do with me being trans. Um, I had kind of a rough day because my fucking toilet decided to overflow and it just like in the course of trying to fix it it I, I i flushed too many times and it backed the fuck up and it just it flooded my bathroom with gross poop water and i got really stressed out about it and i mean it got resolved ultimately but anyway point is i'm a bit stressed out at the moment but I want to make a quick video talking about just the kind of ridiculous transphobic shit that my dad believes and that I want to address because he's, I, I told him like, basically I have nothing else to talk to him because I'm basically talking to a brick wall as far as like, he just doesn't understand and he, he might never understand and you know what, like whatever. I'm going to live my life whether or not he understands. I don't, I mean, yes, it would be ideal if he understood, but he doesn't have to. It's his prerogative not to, and it's my prerogative to not ever talk to him again if he wants to play that way. Um, but anyway, so the, the present context is that, um, God, my voice sounds really awful right now too, because it's just, when I, when I got stressed out about the toilet, I yelled myself hoarse and you can probably tell that I'm not at my best, but right. So my mom and my dad, they got divorced back in 06 and they have an apartment together and my mom wants them to sell it finally, which I think is good. And anyway, they're just having a conversation about it and my dad cannot fucking help himself. And he, he has to like, you know, drag me into this, even though my mom specifically asked him not to, um, I mean, first he started out saying, like, I'm irresponsible um, because, you know, like, I'm mentally ill or whatever. And, like, uh, he, I, I'm not going to get into the really fucked up stuff he said over Facebook chat, which is what prompted me to tell him that I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. But in this particular email thread, at least, he, he said I'm irresponsible, which is complete bullshit. If anything... Right now is the period in my life that I am the most responsible. I have my own apartment and I have a fiance and we're getting married very soon. Um, and just, I, you know, yes, there's always stuff I can do better, but I just, I just feel like I'm, I'm in a pretty good point in my life and just being called irresponsible solely because I'm trans and because my dad thinks I'm destroying my body or whatever, which is bullshit. My body is doing just fine. Um, I'm really happy with my, my progress, uh, transition wise, but anyway, I keep getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. So, so yeah, he called me irresponsible and, and then he, um, my mom and him got into a bit of a thing and my dad just commented that he, he had, from the very beginning, told my mom that I shouldn't go to an all-boys school. Um, I went to Landon and Bethesda for middle school and high school. And, like, it's just, it's a ridiculous claim that he's making that if I hadn't gone to an all-boys school, I wouldn't be gay. First of all, I'm not gay. I'm queer. I'm pansexual. I mean, I, my sexual preference is for anybody who I deem attractive, regardless of their gender. Um, so first of all, I'm not gay. That's, that's not correct. But second of all, he's conflating sexual uh, orientation with the uh, gender identity. And yes, that's a pretty common mistake, especially in the uninitiated, you know, those who are not into the trans. Um, but it's just, it's ridiculous. I, if anything, like I was having a conversation with my fiance about this earlier um, but if anything, going to an all boys school suppressed the shit out of my queerness because that's not a safe space to come out as any kind of queer, like, which is evidenced by the fact that, um, even though there, th I had classmates who were gay, um, or who are gay, should I say, or bisexual or whatever, um, 
nobody dared come out while they were at Landon. Like, they didn't come out till after graduation. So, you know, it, it, it's not a, an environment for, for queerness. Um, I definitely enjoyed my schooling there. Um, the, the school has some really wonderful faculty, and I got along really well with my teachers. And academically, I had a lovely experience there. But, I mean, socially, I kind of just hung out with the nerds and the weirdos. In middle school, it's funny. Like, my friend group was kind of the lowest on the social ladder, I feel like. Um, and amusingly enough, coincidentally or not, um, pretty much everybody in that group turned out to be some kind of queer. Um, so, like, you know, the, the takeaway can be that queer, queer people are kind of at the bottom of the social ladder, at least in middle school and an all-boys school. Now, this is just one data point, but I'm, I'm just working with my dad's ridiculous assumption here, so bear with me. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's just, at, while I was at, at Landon, I thought about school. I didn't think about gender. I didn't, like, I sort of, I mean, I had a girlfriend, I, I guess, like, it wouldn't be fair for me to say I didn't, but the depth of my relationship with her was pretty limited, and I just, I, I didn't really know what I was doing, and, I mean, even when I had another girlfriend later on, like in 2012, that didn't go well either. I was super clingy and, you know, she dumped me after like four months. So like right now I'm on my third relationship ever and it's going great. But, <laughs> you know, it's, I feel like it's a lot easier to be in a relationship if you have a better inkling of who you are as a person. Um, like not being aware of, of my gender stuff until, you know, the last two, three years, um, I mean, that's debatable when it started, but, um, I started taking concrete action and, like, doing cross-dressy type stuff, like, April 2016, so that's definitely not very long ago, but, like, there were inklings of, of gender stuff even before then, and, like, coincidentally or not, um, some really lovely music and video game content that I consumed, like, I guess around 2013, 2014, um, were put together by trans people. So, like, my, an artist I really like is, um, it's a solo project called The Luna Sequence, and, um, the woman behind it, her name is Kaya Young, I think, um, and she later partnered with, um, another lady of the cis variety to have a really nice um, collab project because her solo project is instrumental only. It's kind of like a fusion of metal and electronic music. And I really like the instrumentals, um, but I also really like the her collab project. But anyway, like I was just kind of like pretty fascinated by her. I was like, wow, like, she's really cool, like, she's attractive, like, there was definitely some unacknowledged, like, looking up to her, even at the time, um, and then, and then later on, like, in 2014, I got, um, a couple of games, um, on Valentine's Day on Steam, because there was a Steam sale for Valentine's Day, um, so the games are Analog, A Hate Story, and the sequel to that, which is, a, uh, Hate Plus, and they're about this derelict Korean spaceship, and you're tasked with investigating what the heck happened. And I'm not going to give any spoilers. The story is really lovely. But the author behind that game is also a trans woman, Christine Love. And I, I, I had a bit of a transphobic reaction when I, when I figured out that the author was trans. And I'll confess that it's just mainly because I didn't think she was quite as beautiful as uh, Kaya. And that's fucked up in retrospect, but I mean, it's hard for closeted trans people to not be transphobic at times. Um, so I'm not proud of that, but I'm acknowledging it for what it is. So, um, I mean, I, I guess where I'm going with this is that I didn't, I didn't have the, the space to think about gender while I was at Landon and it's just my dad's suggestion that Landon turned me gay or something is just completely ridiculous. And I just, it was, 
I'm, I'm, I'm kind of giving up on him for now, but I mean, I don't know. He's apparently really upset. And as, as I told his wife over Facebook messenger, um, like it seems to me that he is mourning the abstract notion of me as being his son. Whereas like, it doesn't seem like he cares about the concrete person who's right fucking here in front of him. Um, I mean, he's overseas, so, you know, there's, there's the whole geographic distance and all that, but like he was, he was here in 2016, um, like December and early January and things were actually pretty civil, but <clears throat> I had just started like taking hormones and he was, it was awkward. Our interactions were kind of forced and as it turns out, he was kind of trying to set aside any discomfort with my gender presentation um, because I was like wearing bras and like you could see the outline of the bra on my shirt and like anyway he was uncomfortable with it but he kind of didn't say anything and he did meet my my you know my boyfriend and I mean later on like he's misgendering the shit out of both of us which is not cool but like at the time he was civil and you know it was it was all right but as soon as he went back to Romania, um, <laughs> he, any pretense of trying to deal with me as I am just kind of fell away. And, you know, I, we, we, we've talked on and off, but he's just, as he's realizing that this is a more permanent thing and it's not like a phase, he's gotten more desperate and freaking out and stuff and... You know, saying I have a mental illness and I need to see a psychiatrist. And I'm just like, dude, I have a therapist. She has she, she has a PhD. She knows what the fuck she's talking about. She's She knows about queer stuff. Like, I, I, am, I am seeing a mental health professional. So, like, what the fuck are you telling me to go see a, a, a psychiatrist? Like, and furthermore, he doesn't even want to see a psychiatrist. Even though, in my opinion, he's the one with the problem. So, I mean hypocritical maybe I don't know what to call it um anyway I'm sorry I've, I've kind of rambled enough I think about this subject it's just it's something that's been bugging me and I want it to get off my chest so yeah um oh god I subtitled my last video which was pretty short um but I don't know I hope I'll do this one too I I definitely feel I feel like I've done a better job not saying um as much or like or you know, but I'll rewatch this and I'll probably find more instances of it than I had expected. But I think I'm going to leave it here. I'm not even sure what to title this video, but I'll figure it out. Um, I hope everybody has a lovely evening and I'm signing out. Bye.